Winner's side of top 24, it is Tilde versus Lima. This should be really fun too. Tilde the five seed, Lima the 12 seed. So two really highly touted players coming out here for Riptide. Did a little bit of research, had never played before up until this point. So a new saga being built here. I'm excited to see it. And, and both of them play, you know, a really punish game heavy yes. style with these characters that lean towards that strength. Falco, known for the cutscene combos. Bayonetta has been writing those cutscenes for <laughs> six years now. Absolutely. Both going to want to play a really aerial based punish game as well, too. So one gets caught out in the air, it could be dangerous. And they're going to be lurking up there the whole time. Mm -hmm. You're going to see lots of stuff going on in the top magnifying glass, potentially, because both Falco has that really high double jump height. You get you up there and get sneak a stock really early with a high up air. Lima going to be using all of those witch twist resources and triple jump cancels, all sorts of crazy stuff to just be floating above the stage. Although I guess they don't want to go to Pokemon Stadium. This <laughs> been a, a, a mistake of a pick. Um, curious where we end up instead. Yeah, should be good here too. Obviously both characters are going to excel with that, you know, a lower ceiling, but I think Tilde might be able to find a better advantage on a stage with smaller side blast zone. Obviously that back air, huge forward air, huge as well. That's exactly what the doctor ordered here because Smashville was the lock. We are going to some of the closest side blast zones are on the stage list. Let's see what we got here for game one. Tilde Lima here in top 24. Starting off with the laser here to draw some percentage. Not on high enough to have that Wish Wish convert to that back air. You don't really think of Falco's laser as like a, a camping laser, right? Right. Like, like setting up all the way across the stage and using the laser. But the fact that is that does, you know, stun in this game, unlike the Fox laser, right? That's the, the typical trade off between the two. It will be a projectile advantage versus Lima's Bayonetta gun. Mm -hmm. Very true, too. And you have so many, like, long lasting approach options from Bayonetta. You could definitely catch out a few lasers. But instead, they are just kind of scrapping back and forth at the moment. No Ooh. big swings until that down air finally finds the mark. That, that's the longest combo we've seen. Ooh, drag out there through the nair. Which time going to come out? Not going to be punished, but Lima staying on the platform will be down tilt. Yeah, just going to stay safe out there. Do not want to compete with Bayonetta offstage. It can be scary. And now Tilda going coast to coast, sending from the one side of Smashville over to the other, and then turns around. That's a sour hit of the back air. Sweet spot certainly would have killed, but you don't mind the safe position as you get a neutral get up as your reward. Solid stuff there, too. Great find on that left side. Hanging out on the platform. This could be scary. Did wait out Lima's invincibility, but does not matter. We got combos. Air dodge there. Not going to be punished, but the further fall down will. And that's something that should be so interesting in this set between these two players, because again, they play combo oriented characters. And they know, oh, this is, oh, okay, save, save the double jump. Very smart here from Tilde. Nothing I love more than that. Honestly, going onto the stage back to the other side, trying to get these juggles going, running off the platform, trying to get the illusion, getting stuffed out twice here by Lima. Bullets not going to be used, but which time will be. Oh! But the persistence on the recovery here from Tilde has been excellent. Oh, great Keep tech. Keep the tech's going, baby. Not going to get scattered out. These Bayonetta aerials can reach far. Great tech on the ground. No run up grab from Tilde. You will see that often as a tech chase. Trying to get off stage back here and not going to stage spike or connect. These Falco recoveries have been superb, and this is only halfway through the first game of this best of five set. Amazing how Ooh. Tilda has made it back from these, these scary edge guard situations that Bayonetta is so well known for. Yeah, barely missing these nares and everything. Back throw off stage here too. No bullets. We are going to drop again. That nair not going to do it. Oh my goodness, the Firebird gonna have the reach. I did not trust those Magna Hands, but Tilde certainly did. Ooh, okay. Finally off stage, going to pay off for Lima. That persisted side B has been a big point of this match thus far. Lima's caught it out a few times, but Tilde's also gained some percent off of it. Give me the up smash, though. No fly zone. Good anti uh, witch twist answer. That's one thing that Tilde is really going to have to keep on his P's and Q's in this set is not letting any of those touches of the shield go unpunished. And so far, he's two for two on those up smashes. Ooh, give me this, though. Jumping on a shield with the back air, you are not afterburner kicking above me. And here comes another vertical combo. And so this is what's interesting. I, I tried to start saying it earlier in this game, but then we there's so much of a scramble off the side that I got interrupted. Um, their anti-combo game for each player is going to be really good because they understand how to DI their own combos. Right, and so then the DI and SDI mix-ups are so important on the on the defensive side here. Ooh, this is scary. Needed angle here. We'll find one Tilde. My goodness, turn around, grab out of shield, there to push off any lasers. We will find two. Yep. Oh, off the ledge. Come here. Continue this lock and, and just take it slow and say no need to jump off the stage, challenge any of these staying at a long-lasting hitboxes. But are you gonna blink on the shield with the back air? No, not yet. 
aggressive option coming from ledge from Lima. The jump off and then ABK down does hit Tilde standing stationary. We were back in neutral here. Give me these rapid jabs off my stage. Almost killing, my goodness. That move was buffed a while back. Now it is a legitimate kill option and ban that is kicked. Ooh. Scary side B under the shield there too. Trying to get the mix. Great empty land coming from Lima. The throw will do it. 100% difference here. I love the use of just forward air one yes. and forward air one two as just a little bit of a mix up there. Yeah, the mix up's so good. It can force out air dodges too. People aren't ready to land at that point. Not going to find the backer off side B. Tilde is riding and dying with that move. And he's putting on pressure with the forward air in the corner. Lima going to sneak out using that diagonal angle that Bayonetta is so good at finding. Oh, stinky leg forward tilt too. Hovering over this ledge here. You cannot approach from above. That Nair will scoop. Order almost enough to kill Bayonetta. Bayonetta, one of the lighter characters in the game, and she's also very tall, which makes her combo food, but she can Ooh, put it out with two, the best of them. Three off the top for Lima. Finesse that game one. Okay. Incredible comeback potential here from Lima, right? That, that we, We've seen that time and time again, but it's going to work out so well. Well, it was uh, uh, maybe a little bit rage-assisted. The, the, the rage factor isn't as high for Bayonetta as it is was in Smash 4, but it still definitely helped knock Falco just barely off the blast zone. Yeah, great pickup there, too. Falco being the fast follower he is, Bayonetta can really eat with those Witch Twist combos. Very, very good find there in the top of blast zone. Going to game two here, going to be Tilde's counterpick. Small battlefield. A little bit more range on the ground. So it's just bait out some of these movement options from Bayonetta, right? And the platform layout on Sash, I think, was just really good for Bayo to just start that up. Yes. We saw a couple of those like dive kicks and, and the high afterburner kicks to sneak away from the ledge in the ledge trap situation. That's what Tilda really wants to hold on to, but what a carry to the corner, but DI'ing out of it. Here is Tilda still alive. That was so crazy from Lima to able to scout that jump out. Not going to find the fair hit three. Give me this, though. Air dodge not going to be caught, but Lima was tracing. Oh, give me these weights on the up airs, too. Laser coming back. You're going to eat that. Hovering with the down air going high. Lima's made a lot of money off of that. Tilde's waiting for it. Double dare into triple. Going for the triple dip in the corner. Okay, but that back air trade is excellent. Tilde getting a big swing in. Mm -hmm. Heavy, heavy percent here, though. Nair will get something started. No great tech from Lima, and the tech away was very, very good. Side B in, too. Tilde's been riding or dying with this. Hasn't gotten punished for it all too hard yet. But Lima, gonna have to start picking up on that. Oh, the short hop down there, interesting. And see these afterburner kicks that are that would have landed on the center platform of Smashville instead of a mix-up on that Rude. platform. It's a little bit more predictable for Tilde to understand how to punish it. Give me this drag down, double jump up there. We'll do it. Okay, off the platform assist. Thank you very much. You I'll can DI the laser on that up throw in some situations. Right. If you don't, you're gonna be in trouble. Oh, goodness. Tilde looking for blood here. ABK up, and we are going to get back to stage. It is an endless recovery for Bayonetta. I love Lima holding the guns after that ABK as well, just to really be ambiguous on what the tech timing is going to be for Tilde on these recoveries. No dragon trying to chase down the tech away. Lima has chose tech away on a lot of knockdown scenarios on the ground, but not going to find it here. We see Lima in advantage. One, two, three, going off deep Nair again. Still living though, and that rising fair from the ledge just lingers for so very long. Ooh, what a find for Tilde. So many times we saw Tilde like short hopping at that ledge and trying to find something. It was usually Nair to catch like a higher recovery, mm -hmm. but the down there to stuff out holding above ledge with the witch twist. There we go, 1-1. One, one. You don't think of that spike as one that goes very low below the right, stage. Right, 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 right. You think of it just as like the boots. But they certainly are walking here right over into game number three. Great turnaround here for Tilde, who uh, again showed the, the potential of Falco's vertical combo game, especially on small battlefields, assisted by that left platform to get stock number two. Mm -hmm. Swing game here. If it goes to game five, winner of this one will have counter pick advantage. No character swaps here, would not expect it. See Ned shaking his head in the background there, too. He's sitting in the crowd. <laughs> Interested in what he's seeing. PS2, still a bi-plat stage, but that center area going to be a little more open. Platform's a little smaller, kind of harder for Tilde to bring in on, but does not matter. Right, but that, that combo that took stock number two in game number two was assisted by that small battlefield platform. Right. The platform on Stadium 2, a little bit higher off the ground. That would kill even a couple percentage points earlier than it did previously. Give me these. Fair coming across coast to coast. Not going to get the Witch Twist up 
Matilda able to find an up tilt to get a juggle started. Now pressing Lima in the corner. Grab not going to work outside B again. Okay, but you whiff that up tilt onto the shield, and this is a good punish right back for Lima, who now claims the stage and is starting to wall out with this back air. And Ooh. speaking of a wall, try to get through this F smash. My goodness, and the taunt coming out from Lima, trying to get cheeky with a witch time after the immediate spawn from Tilde, but will not work. Finding a good advantage here on the right side. Aggressive options off ledge will be scouted in the taunt response. Yeah, that, that qualifies as a taunt to get bodied, right? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, that checks all the boxes. <laughs> All right, well, we're one set into this commentary block, and we've already seen a taunt to get body. I, I, I call it a good day at the office. Give me these drag down grab. We've seen it before. Oh, trying to get the reset on that down air. The up air one to KO at that low percentage yeah. point, so I definitely understand going for the, the long movie, right? Alka known for these cutscene combos. Continuing the chase on the right side. But okay. nice and sneaky land from Lima, and we've seen this hit the, the reversal potential from Bayonetta already. Mm -hmm. Give me these APK up into Nair. Oh, not going to catch the ear dodge. Smart for Lima to go to ledge. Does not want any of that landing lag. Uh-uh. Good pressure on that shield. You see the fade away after the second and third. Until they was also really patient. Not going to force a landing off of these stadium platforms. That's a, a thing that, like, you know, lower and mid-level players will want. They'll just want to get to the base platform as fast as possible. But being comfortable in that disadvantage allows a sneaky uh, uh, Falco Phantasm into the stage to turn around for a bear. Trying to get caught there. Tilde so good at saving this jump and so good off the tech as well. Free falling to that ledge, now finding advantage here. Not going to find Lima approaching. That's what that Nair was scouting for. And I love going for the high firebird. If you had gone for the, the angle into the ledge, Lima would have been able to answer back a little bit quicker, right? You're mm -hmm. closer to your opponent who's off the stage lingering. So, again, just excellent prowess on the recovery for Tilde, setting up well. Ooh, the empty hop into your face to get the grab, Tilde. Very confident in these ledge traps approaching. Fair, back to neutral. And now we could see a little bit more of this laser game because the yes. onus is on Lima for sure to approach. You take two freebies yeah, off the side. Yeah, you've seen that. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things when watching a lot of Fox players, right, is when they get the forward throw two laser combo because those lasers are guaranteed, but you don't really think about it too much. It oh, all adds died. up, and these combos all add up, too. No kill screen, no theatrics for that one. All business here for Tilde up to one. It doesn't even look surprised at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, that did kill. But mm, yeah. I, that's that's a, a day at the office for him. Yeah, I know. Falco Extraordinaire knows what happens when. I mean, the 5C2, super high expectations. This Falco plans to go far. And so far, living up to the billing. Got yourself a 2-1 lead versus one of the best players in Texas, Lima. Trying to get the upset here, trying to stay in that winner's bracket. I'm thinking that Stadium 2, yeah, might not have been the... the the stage for him. So we're mm. going to see a town and city swap. Excited to see what Lima plans to do on this stage. Obviously, the platform height, having some of the highest platforms available in the stage list, could aid well for both characters. Bayonetta might be able to get some of those resets, though, earlier so you don't have to land with so much lag. I'm going to want to see a little bit more of that game one burst from Lima, right? Yes. The, the, the combo game the, did show itself quite a bit in games two and three, but none of it was for that. that Finesse at the top, right? Like you didn't see like the exclamation point KOs. Right. So maybe a reset here on this platform, maybe just with Dr. Ordered, but no, still they're gonna sneak back to the platform. Will give me this whiff grab leads to here for Lima Air Dodge, able to get through the witch twist back air, not gonna get high enough to. That was a dangerous spot for Tilde. Now finds advantage. Hello? Okay. All right. I mean, that was an F smash, and it sure worked. I probably would have gotten hit by that, too. 100% on the taxiing away platform. Crazy. Side B to get a combo started here. Looking for the roll in with that down air. Lima smart to choose a different option. But now in the final destination portion of this stage, it is time for Tilly to slow the game down a bit. Lima doesn't seem too concerned with that, however. No, not at all. Trying to go off deep here, too. Gets the scout on the roll from ledge. Tilde just really wants oh. majority of stage whenever recovering there, too. Doing so much as to double jump high, side B in, and try to air dodge back, but Lima had it all scouted. That air dodge back was respect for Witch Twist, yes. right? Yes, so yes, 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 yes. Was uh, that it's not really certain whether the Witch Twist would have killed you there, but it would have certainly put you in a bad spot. However, the back air doesn't need no combo, doesn't need no fanciness. It's just going to kill you. Mm. Seems like Lima may have re instilled the fear here, too. Pulling off a great lead, about to lap in percent, and we have going up another air dodge. Air dodge always seems to come after that ABK. Mm -hmm. Looks like 
maybe SDIing it down. That, I remember that was that was the old uh, adage in Smash 4 was you want to SDI those, those afterburner kicks and wish twists downwards to try and sneak away, especially if you're a fastball, yes. right? Because you're going to get to the ground faster than really any other character. Ooh. Hovering with these downers. Tilde's really kind of, you know, left the down tilt edge guard at home today. Been mostly just hovering down airs, hovering nares. Does not want to get clipped on a recovery. And then turn around to back air as the yes. mix-up. But okay, again, yeah, he, the DI down from Tilda in this combo is going to keep him alive much longer. Well, give me this air dodge going to be caught. Lima finds a back air on the second try. Platforms leaving the premises here. FD variant. Yeah, that survival DI is not really going to help you on a two-piece combo, so good stuff to Lima to set up that three-stock to one advantage. That has now just turned into a two-stock to one advantage, but you're still sitting pretty here. Ooh, going to get caught for the side B. Working that ledge here again, great in there. Sends you back off stage. And now again. we're going we're to see more of those dares because, well, the risk reward just makes so much more sense to go for the spike. We saw that kill, I think it was like 60 after the hit sent Bayonetta to the last zone. Mm -hmm. Remember, spikes send you down much faster than you would anticipate. Ooh, lasers, great crouch there too. Tilde dancing here too. Forces out that down tilt, able to scout it out immediately with the side B. Lima not taking too much damage for it. Uh-oh, we see a spike again. No hesitation from Lima. Get up attack, though. You saw it. That dare reset was really slick, though. I liked what I saw from Lima, but then you get caught on the Kalos transformation of town and city platform. That's one thing that Tilde is going to feast on in town, right? That horizontal kill ability. But speaking of horizontal kill ability, if you get witch timed right there, you are so dead. JV two stock goes to Lima. We are getting that game five script. What a response from Lima as well. All having like a three stock to one lead at some point, it really felt like, you know, till they had an answer coming into the latter half of that game. Lima seals it out though. PS2 will be our final stage here in this set. So they did earn that uh, counter pick advantage in game five. As you mentioned, it matters so much when it comes to the set play. And we saw how comfortable Tilde was on Pokemon Stadium in game number four, the game you won. Or, no, sorry, game three was, was the Pokemon Stadium two game. And, uh, yeah, I think that the plan is just going to be the same as it always was. It's just I hope my combo game lands, and I hope I can get these, uh, these ledge guards and edge traps. They were so effective previously, but, you know, okay, now we're hovering away. Ooh. Kalos Pokemon League. Big, big blast zones here, too. A lot of people talk. Bayonetta has a trouble killing sometimes these larger sides and ceiling. will make it just that much harder. Falco, all that, hor all that like, flat horizontal stage to work with as well, too. Till they, I really, again, think side is going to be a big thing here. No platforms for Lima to retreat to to avoid it. And if you force Bayonetta in the air, you can start that juggle situation. Right. And we saw a, an excellent KO at the end of that game, number four, that until they set up on the Kalos transition of town and city. These side platforms on Kalos, sometimes they look like they'll be a respite, but then they just end up killing you. Right, snake bitten platforms. Indeed. And now it's starting off hot in game number five, Till they. 50% coming his way, and he gets this uh, this favorable positioning where he can set up these dares and the mix up. However, Lima sneaks in again. Dancing here, though. Ooh, up throw back air, no problem. Yep, and then take the time with your lasers to set up. Still looking for these dares. Dancing here, picked up with the single hit, no further follow up. Oh, that dash up, up tilt. Give me the back air as well. Till they on the board in game five. That, that is the bread and butter Falco kill confirm at that around like 90 to 100 range. And it's going to work for a long time on Bayonetta because it's she's got that long wiry frame, right? It's, it's a very easy to combo frame. Ooh, run up here too. Not going to let anything fly. Both players getting out of it relatively unscathed. Trying to catch the option there too. You see the short hop shine preventing any aerial approaches. Side B back. Run away too. Very good. And this is the part of the, the game state on Kalos where it can get really tricky for Bayonetta to kill. As you mentioned, we're starting to get like 120, 130% range for Falco. The options are going to start to really whittle down to like getting a back air in neutral or getting a jab or a forward throw at the ledge. And as long as the Tilton knows how to play around those specific options, he can hang around for a while. Like, see that, that Falco Phantasm was specifically to go under the back air at the ledge. Mm -hmm. Returning to platform here to Lima. Seems to find a shortly lived home there to finally getting back on stage. Not going to hold these jabs. Okay, but catches the landing. Tilde throwing out back air. Yeah, now if you eat afterburner kicks, they just lead to like, 
another Witch Twist, and it won't connect into the fair confirmed. And look at that back air almost sending all the way to the Blast Zone from center stage at 110. Yeah, kill power, not a problem here for the Falco, and this percentage is prime time for a stock to be taken. Lane is slow, though, too. you got to appreciate it. Lima has shown the capability to pull off stocks with no problem. And that dare was, was a cute attempt of a mix-up when you were expecting something else, like maybe fair one, two, three. Oh, whoa! Ooh, hello! What a find there, too. Off the wall, Tech immediately pressing there. Beat out Lima's attempt to recover. And now this, this is an even more dire comeback situation for Lima. As you get caught in the cutscene once more, zero to 50. Falco can combo with the best of them. And look at that, look at that, that second Witch Twist just leads to absolutely nothing. Lima just has to hold Nair and hope that it presents enough of a threat on the recovery side. Wait, Ooh. you got the wall jumps too! Nice, you gotta love that, got to love that, but Lima staying persistent on the edge guard. Back air into stage, untackable, you will die. But so much work left to be done yet for the, the Texas Phenom if he is expecting to make it further in the winner's bracket. 72% and the number is only rising, but he, okay, here's a nice combo right back. 50 unanswered. Back air, double air dodge in. Lima put into the corner at their own volition. Side B onto shield there too. Great pickup here for Lima. Jump now use. Yeah, this is it. Wants to get back into stage so bad. ABK. Staying alive. I, that was crazy DI. I think he died left mm -hmm. on the ABK. And it just, I, I did not expect that to be the correct answer. That, that's why Tilda is this far on the, in his bracket life, right? He knows how to stay calm in those do or die situations. Back air's pressured on shield here too. No drag down, gonna get the full extent of the forward air. Hovering with Dare once again too. Lima just jumps off passively from ledge. So many times we've seen aggressive options come out. Force of the respect there gets led. And I think, well, this is Kala, so I don't think one of those up airs will really just kill off of the base platform yet, but an up tilt certainly should lead to a kill option. The forward throw, almost enough. Kala's definitely clutching there though. Ooh, trying to rise and meet with the back air there too is till they play in the slow game still. Yep, no, two side no reason oh to rush because when yes. you give up a roll like that, Lima's back in the game. One stock apiece, do or die stocks. And we saw game one as well. Till they 100% lead. Same thing here. That game was dropped. Oh my goodness. Are we finding a fair string? Looking for the jump, but holding out is Till they not going to get hit by it. And that's really smart survival DI again. You don't usually think DI towards the blast zone is the safe option, but it saved Till they's life. Ford Air on shield running away from it. That was such good coverage. And the drift back grab, are you kidding me? Must be out of the, the up throw KO confirmed percentage. 140 does not seem to be it. Oh! My goodness, that was crazy. That was because there was one used a little bit earlier, so that one not going to last as long. That was also a re-grab from Lima, so had to pull out something crazy. And now Lima's going to have to wait as long as possible. Good thing that Bayo has those stall tools off the side of the lead because that would have been a re-grab. But this forward air might oh, not be goodness. enough. A two count for Lima. Hold this laser, though. Going to have to ABK two ledge perfectly snapping. The roll on, but Tilde ready for it. Up throw, DIing the laser as you were talking about, but caught with the forward air. That is a win for the New York Falco. Moving on deeper into this bracket. One set away from top eight. What again? Just the survival di in those those situations, right? Right. This this, uh, this is clearly a player who knows how to anti combo game another person's combo game because he is as as good at comboing as any in the business, right? right. So he is going to know those situations where he feels comfortable to di in when he is getting uh, witch twisted at the very top of the screen, di out towards the blast zone when it could carry you closer to your demise. However, if you DI in, that's the trap that Lima was trying to set. I kept him alive just long enough to stave off the comeback attempts of Lima and move on the winner's side. Shout out to Lima, though, pushing a top eight seed here to a game five. I'm expecting great things to come in the loser's bracket for the Bayonetta, but we got more smash action. We got more stuff to go through. This is so much <laughs> fun right now. So many good sets coming up, and another great one here. Jake versus Toast, seven seed, 10 seed, Toast, Partial Ohio native comes North Carolina and rocks Ohio as well. And Jake from Florida should be really good. One previous set in the past was online, but Jake taking Smash World Tour Southeast online qualifier 3 0. Uh, a Steve set online, you True. say? Yeah, I mean, I mean. Oh, no, okay, okay, I can't, I can't. Steve wins that matchup online. I can't <laughs> talk too much smack about it because it's Young Link online too. Fair, fair, Young, fair, fair, fair. Young Link online is also one of those online warriors. So I'm really curious to see what kind of anti Steve 
tech or gameplay adjustments Toast brings to the table because uh, Steve can deal with the, the anti-camp gameplay yeah. very well. It, it's sort of like a, 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 a the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? The, the, <laughs> the best way to beat a camper is to out-camp them with right. some, setting up some walls, setting up some resources. And then, of course, both characters are really good at scrapping in the middle with their, their A button tools as well. Right, really, really hard boxers here, too. I do feel like Young Link does get a little bit more off of tilt, being a like, down tilt and uh, like up tilt can start some really nasty juggles. And also, like those up close shield scramble situations can be really good because Steve's gonna want to like pressure your shield with those like short hop falling back airs and stuff like that. Maybe even walk up jabs. If you can get the up B out of shield, you can get some nasty juggles. Indeed. I'm really curious to see how we get there. 